So yeah, um, I was, uh, we talked, we touched on this a couple episodes ago when we were talking about how the world needs another, you know, young martial arts, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, superstar, somebody who can come in and and really take over the movie world and show us some new things. And and, uh, this day and age, you know, Marvel's got the new movie coming out. What's the title? Uh, Shang-Chi. 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 Yes. Chang Chi, yeah, Marvel's got the new one coming out, but that's like you know more fantasy, mm-hmm. martial arts, a lot of green screen, a lot of computer yeah. tricks going on. But we're talking about raw kung fu, you Practical know, effects. raw mm-hmm. kung fu. We're Fight. talking about the legend Jackie Chan. Oh, okay. okay yeah. And you know, when you think of uh, you know martial arts kung fu guys, you know, you're you got Bruce Lee, mm-hmm. whose life was short lived, unfortunately, R. Yeah. P. And you got, you know, you got your uh, uh, Jet Li. Yes. You got Jet Li. But, you know, I think personally, you know, and it's because Bruce Lee passed away so early. Mm -hmm. I think Jackie Chan's one of the best, one of the greatest out there. I mean, he is got a star on the hollywood walk of fame Mm -hmm. he's got a star on the hong kong walk of fame whatever their version of it you know he's a hong kong actor he's from china uh he's been in over you know 150 movies since uh the 1960s Mm -hmm. and uh you know i was doing a little yeah i did a little research i didn't do a bunch you know homework on him uh apparently there's you know i don't know how much of is of this is revisionist history i watched an interview with him recently where he talked about he worked with bruce lee when he was 17 years old and bruce lee was just getting getting started like he was becoming famous uh he said that he was a stunt he was one of the stunt actors on uh enter the dragon yeah and uh, there's another movie before that and he was just telling stories about how he had to be, you know, his most of the time his back was to the camera. He didn't get no FaceTime, but he was a stunt guy and he would take the punches. Yeah. The real punches cuz right, back right. then they would they would rehearse things and and then but in, for the actual scene, these stunt guys had to take the actual blow, mm-hmm. you know, cuz Bruce Lee, they got to sell it. They got to make it real. Right. So, uh he was telling stories about how he was taking kicks and punches from Bruce Lee and and to he and, him up. and back then in in the Hong Kong movie industry they couldn't say that they were hurt because if they said that that they were hurt they would get a new guy in there right right so he'd just take these punches with smiles and stuff like that and he's like oh my yeah rib is broken so let's get into the movie my movie was uh I picked Rumble in the Bronx because Rumble in the Bronx was one of his first big movies when he crossed over to the uh, Western world yeah into America and he. Uh, that's when America kind of, uh, the masses anyway, mainstream, started to know who Jackie Chan was. He right. came over with Rumble in the Bronx, set in New York City. So then, you know, the, I relived the movie. The movie opens up. He's flying in to New York City to help his uncle sell this supermarket that he has in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. And his uncle's selling it. His uncle is getting ready to marry this uh, this black lady from the Bronx. Right. And... Uh, and so they sell the supermarket to this other Chinese lady, and Jackie Jackie decides to stick around for the week to watch his uncle's property and mm-hmm. to help this lady transition into the supermarket. And so, you know, the movie's going along. Uh, you know, six minutes into the movie, you get your first fight scene. He's uh, He's sleeping in the middle of the night in Bronx. Uh, biker gang shows up. They start doing these street things, these street races in the middle of the street, and they're destroying cars that are parked, right? And one of, one of the cars down there was his uncle's car that he was going to use, he borrowed for his wedding. So he went down there and uh, stopped them from wrecking his uncle's car. And uh, when he did this, now he's got beef with the biker gang. Yeah. Because he, he made him lose a thousand bucks, right? So, the, uh, you know, and that's when you see the, the main bad guy and the woman, the love story in it. So they go back to the supermarket. Jackie Chan's working in the supermarket uh, the next morning. And then the biker gang shows up. Because it's a local supermarket. The bad guys are going to use local things. Right, right. They go in there. They start 
buying snacks and they're stealing them right mm -hmm. guys are in there drinking juices and leaving them on the shelves and stuff so he confronts them as they're leaving it's like going to walmart yeah <laughs> and a second fight breaks out you know mm -hmm. and he's over here he's showing he's flexing his kung fu abilities and no one knew he had these abilities and right. now all of a sudden he's known he's like who's this guy right the bad guys and and the lady he's helping you know she kind of catches feelings and sh starts falling in love with jackie chan because yeah. he's over here you know doing his thing and he's like i'll protect you and all this other thing so that that scene moves on a lot of a lot of a lot of humor in it it's 90s action there's some cringe in it um so the story you know the third fight He's walking home later that night after the store closes and he sees uh the bad guy's girlfriend right he he see he he doesn't know it, it it's her at first but he sees four guys grab this girl and run run into the alley and he's like oh no you know he's trying to prevent a, a crime going on but it was a setup right. so he runs into the alley and they all disappear and he's like what's going on and then all of a sudden the whole gang shows up right and then they corner him into this small alley where there's there's a dead end he can't get up and they they start taking baseball bats and wrapping them in uh clothes so they don't break these liquor bottles and for some reason they just have tons of liquor bottles in these trash cans right mm -hmm. conveniently yeah and uh half half you know half filled so they start they start playing with jackie chan in the alley and they they're hitting these bottles at him and he's against a brick wall and these bottles are all shattering he's getting cut up by the by the pieces yeah. he's getting hit with bottles and everything and blood's running on his face and they're they're really you know tearing into him and the, the one guy that he broke broke this guy's nose in the supermarket he whips out a gun right the and, only one with a gun out of the yeah biker game? yeah the only one with a gun you know they're they're not trying to Right. promote a bunch of guns in this movie of but uh yeah. but he's like no nah, let's have fun with him so that's when they start doing the stuff the the bottles and then he turns out to be a jerk because he accidentally slaps one of the girls and then they all leave and jackie is just there bloody somehow makes it back to his apartment complex uh bloodied up fine at the top of the stairs in the meantime his neighbor there's a disabled kid in a wheelchair right mm -hmm. So he, this kid is cis siblings with the, 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 the bad guy's girlfriend, mm -hmm. right? And the bad guy girlfriend come out of the apartment and Jackie Chan's all bloodied up. And she's like, oh, this, this guy, I know this guy, right? And the wheelchair kid comes out and is like, oh, it's Jackie, you know, the neighbor. And, and then that's when she finds out that they've been beaten up on the neighbor, mm -hmm. the neighbor's nephew. And uh, so they bring him in, bandage him up. This poor guy, he's laying on the couch, all bandaged up. Jackie Chan, he's just been in three fights. You know, we're we're fifteen minutes into the movie, and yeah. he's <laughs> it's action packed. So he he wakes up and he's like, he doesn't know, he doesn't see the sister yet. He just sees the kid in the wheelchair, and uh, the kid's like, yeah, my sister has a bunch of jobs. She's you know, he's embarrassed to say what she really does. And um, so Jin, Jackie Chan realizes it's late. He's got to get to the supermarket. So he starts walking to the supermarket. Here comes the fourth fight. He's walk. <laughs> He's walking during the daylight, and then all of a sudden the biker gang just spots him out of nowhere, and then now he's running all over the place. So anyway, it's it's it, you know the whole movie keeps going, and uh, it, 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 the biker gang is small small potatoes, right? Right. Because then it cuts to a scene of like these African guys from Jamaica, or Jamaican guys who are trying to sell. They're trying to sell drugs or something to this other gang in New York City, mm -hmm. right? And then they get into this commotion or diamonds. They're trying to sell diamonds. And uh, there's a wreck that happens in front of, you know, the biker gang. And they go and they steal the suitcase, the bad guys. And it, it, it gets a little jumbled up. And so Jackie starts helping these guys out. You know, because they're, they're they're just small time crooks. Yeah. You know, and he's like, oh, these are the real big bad guys because they're actually they got automatic weapons. They're killing people, this that and the other. And um, the movie keeps going on. There's a lot of good fight scenes in it. I recommend anybody to go revisit it. It's got the big, uh, what do you call that? The vehicle, the the big vehicle that goes on water and land. Like a hovercraft. Hovercraft, huge yeah. hovercraft scene at the end. You don't want to miss. He's jumping. You know, Jackie Chan breaks his ankle d filming this movie, too. Oh, really? And yeah, he, when he jumps onto the hovercraft, you can kind of... And they keep that shot, too. Yeah. But when he jumps onto the hovercraft, you see his whole ankle just snap. 
yeah, it goes sideways. And they show that in the blooper reels at the end. You you ever remember old all the Jackie Chan movies at the end of the at the end of the movies they would show all his stunts that he did and all the bloopers where that didn't turn out like he'll get hit in the face. Um yeah, there was a great there was a great fight scene in a warehouse where he's like, you know, and what's great about Jackie Chan is like you can do all the kung fu punches and stuff. He incorporates a lot of different. I was going to ask about that weaponry, right? Right. right. He's creative. He's creative. He fight. He's fighting with yeah. ladders. He's fighting with uh, refrigerators. refrigerators. Yeah. He's jumping over, doing you know parkour on pinball machines. Yeah. That's another thing. He introduced a little parkour into the movie. He's jumping up walls, trying to get away from people, doing all kinds of crazy stunts uh go relive the movie it's i don't want to just spoil it for anybody who's a, who's never seen it it's a good movie well, it's been 25 years he's so a nice like, guy yeah. he's a nice guy jackie chan comes yeah. off as a real nice guy in most of his movies um and uh yeah i Rump think he i think he does great when they pair him up with chris tucker is it chris tucker yeah rush hour yeah yeah that's later on you know and yeah. then he he did the rush hour series mm -hmm. and i heard they're making a, a fourth one Okay. You know, because he, yeah. uh, Jackie Chan came out like four or five movie, uh, years ago with The Foreigner. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was three, four years ago. And I don't know if you ever seen that one. No. He's a little old in it, but I watched it and he still got it. I was going to ask, how, how old, do you know how old Jackie Chan is? He's now? in his 60s. Wow. He's 67. So when he filmed that one movie, he was 62. Jeez. So, and, but he still got it. Yeah, I mean, he was in there doing his thing and getting beat up and coming back and never, never, you know. I yeah. mean, it's movies. They're oh gonna... yeah, of course. But, but he still got the moves. Yeah, because he, he does still got his the own moves. Stunts. So that's my uh, homage, paying homage to the great Jackie Chan. I probably didn't do him justice, but you can go. I look... how excited you were about it. Go yeah. look up his catalog. It was great when I watched it as a kid. It was, it was phenomenal watching it as an adult. It's still great because it's still it didn't have you know it didn't have all the special effects you know right, he's right. one scene he's jumping off of a of a parking garage structure onto another structure like the fire escape right and he's just he does all that himself he jumps off of it and he lands on the fire escape luckily there was a door open there so it kind of his door he didn't run into a brick wall with all his momentum he got through yeah. that doorway you know, and then he flips off the bad guys. and Shit, man, I don't know how they rehearse that part. This is what you're going to do, Jackie. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I can do it. And then it's got the, you know. Okay, Joe. It's got the New York Police Department guys in there. Like, your your typical detectives who really don't seem to know what they're doing. Yeah. And they got all their one-liners. And, yeah, one one of the great quotes in the movies was, uh, you know, they, they get the real bad guys in for interrogation, but they can't hold them because they don't have nothing on them. So the lawyers show up, their lawyers show up and... Uh, They're like, you have nothing on my client. Yeah, you got to let them go. And then one of the best quotes, the, the police detective turns around into the camera and he's like, you know, one of the one of the police detectives comes in, the lawyer is just too well connected. And he looks at the screen, he's like, everyone in this damn town's connected. You know, he, yeah. ju he just can't seem to get the bad guy, right? <laughs> Did the detective have that raspy voice, too? Yeah. All the detectives have yeah. those yeah. raspy voices. Yeah, like, he was an old, overweight white guy. Yeah, you know? like, I've been doing this job way too uh, long. Yeah. So what, what, and then there's a funny, he's got a partner who's a funny, you know, he's a black dude, he's funny. He's always just seems to be in the scene, not saying much, smoking a cigar, just doing his one-liners. At any point did this guy say, damn? No, oh, okay, no, no, it wasn't like, good. it wasn't a Chris Tucker All role, right. but he was, he had his one-liners and then the white guy is the one with the heartburn, right? Yeah. He's the one acting like he's got the heartburn. He always everything. has a Mylanta, like, you know, yeah. that he keeps it in his yeah. drawer or something. Drinking Pepto. Yeah, uh, exactly. Popping Tums. So tell me, what, what did you like best about the movie? The one thing that you like best about the movie? Um, just the raw kung fu, just the raw fighting. Just you know, you you miss that. You know, you miss good fight scenes mm -hmm. in movies. A lot of things are doctored up these days. Yeah, with green screen and fantasy, you know, things and. Uh, well, one thing that I know about like the Jackie Chan movies or any kind of those fight movies back in the day is yeah. that it was a, it's a dance. It's choreographed. Know, the, yeah, that how they do yeah. it. Um, as opposed to it, but it goes fast. That's the thing is that you want to shoot fast. Yeah. And so if you do it as a dance, you know, you, you know, moving and blocking and doing what you're going to do, then you can get a lot 
pretty much in one take, which is good. I mean, yeah. not just one take, you can do it over again. But, yeah. you know, without the, like, I remember, like, Blade, I remember watching Blade and stuff. And so a lot of the stuff that they do is sped up. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it so it makes it look like as if they're just fast hard blows or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and watching it with the adult eye, um, it does seem a lot slower. Yeah. When you were a kid, everything looked a lot faster and cooler. Um, you can tell it's very it's choreographed for sure. Mm -hmm. But what's great about like I said, when we touched on this before, is he incorporates other things. He mm -hmm. incorporates you know whatever his. Whatever the set is yeah. at that time, whether it's a construction site or a warehouse or a nightclub or this and that, mm -hmm. he's going to use bar stools. He's going to use chairs. He's going to use ladders. He's going to jump up to the next floor crazy, like mm -hmm. like something me and you could probably never do. Right. And uh, do parkour. And he's going to fit between small spots. And you're like, how did he do that? Or he's going to toss a bad guy into a refrigerator and mm -hmm. slam the door on him and... Yeah. open other doors and knock people out with them and this it's shit we would never think about like during a fight yeah <laughs> and know? um like, so it's it's, it's more than just choreographed punches and kicks you know yeah. it's choreographed other materials and that's mm -hmm. where you know it's fun to see the blooper reel at the end yeah because he's he's getting a lot of things in the head he's getting mm -hmm. smashed by pinball machines because he didn't drop down low enough quick enough because the other yeah. people are pushing it on him yeah you know, and he suffered broken ankles. He does, he, you know, he's known for doing most of his stunts. And I would say that he probably does do 90% of his stunts on there. Of course, there was another man in the credits that was listed as a stuntman. But there was only two people listed as stuntmen. Jackie Chan and this other person. Mm -hmm. So he's doing most of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. What, 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 what part you didn't like? Is there any part that you didn't like about it? Um... Rum on the Bronx. I mean, it's just just your typical '90s cringe. There's a lot of parts where it just oh, they have to jump. They have to keep the storyline moving. Yeah. And they just have to make things happen, right? Mm -hmm. They just come out of nowhere, and that you get that with a lot of movies, even to this day. Things yeah. aren't well written. How are we gonna get from point A to point B and make it logical, right? Right. Well, sometimes they they skip that logic and they just go to point A and point B. So like, it just it just is. Yeah, you know? I mean, Rumble in the Bronx was good. Mm -hmm. Look it up, you know. And I watched uh, another movie the uh, yesterday. Uh, what was it? Uh, First Strike. Mm -hmm. You know, these were movies he filmed. I think Rumble in the Bronx he filmed in you know he filmed it in America for sure. But he had a lot of movies just in the vault yeah. that were adapted for mm -hmm. for Western. Uh, viewers you know and of course he had to do voiceovers in english i mean you can still right, in right. rubble in the bronx there's plenty of scenes where he's talking you know uh whatever it is cantonese or mandarin mm -hmm. and he's voicing over english so you're still seeing the oh the mismatch the mismatch words yeah. not synced up but when he's in scenes with a lot more americans like the police detectives yeah they're they're using english and stuff yeah. like that so it's it's cool in that sense too it and more props to him for knowing multiple languages and being able to pull that off. Not many people can do that. So Okay, well good. Well I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed it. I haven't seen Rumble in the Bronx, but maybe You gotta see it. Maybe I'll see it. It's on uh it's on HBO Max and uh there's another free app out there that's showing it. I'm not sure what the name is. I'll probably check it out. Yeah. Okay.